maybe not. Maybe I think later. We lost him. Yeah, Senator, if uh, you did want to jump back in the Zoom room, we'll, we'll get you on about the hearing real quick. But uh, go ahead, Bree. All right. Also up for public hearing is Bill 153 for the Finance Design Construction of DOC, also known as the Department of Corrections Modernization Act of 2021. The bill allows for the construction of a new prison, which will resolve the lack of rehabilitation programs, overcrowding, and personnel issues of the agency. According to the main sponsor, Senator Joe San Augustine, Bill 153 aligns with the department's plans to construct a state-of-the-art correctional facility. The bill, together with DOC's plan, ensures that all federal standards, such as the National Prison Standards and Prison Rape Elimination Act, are met by the agency. That hearing gets underway at 9 a.m. But in the meantime, we're going to head into the Zoom room now where we have reestablished our connection with Sen Senator Frank Bloss, Jr., uh, whose bills are going up for a public hearing any minute now or at the bottom of the hour, Bill 70 and Bill 91. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Bree. Good morning, Chris. I'm sorry you know, this morning we're trying to connect and it's been difficult. So anyways, glad to be on. Well, thank you for being on. Uh, two of your bills, I think they're still scheduled for a hearing this morning, correct? Yeah, a couple of bills. Um, you know, both of them basically pandemic related. Um, and I'm glad that uh, finally getting a hearing so that uh, we can hopefully get it on, you know, on to such an, such an agenda. Um, you know, two bills. First off, a bill that would provide some recompense for uh, you know, of the community for having to, as a result of mandates from, you know, from the government to 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 purchase personal protective equipment, you know, high, hygiene products, you know, to uh, you know for uh, to to keep uh, safe, um, a bill that would be able to provide uh, up to five hundred dollars, uh, you know, basically uh, per individual per 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 per, you know, in in this case, and it could be our youth. Uh, but it's for families who have had to spend money that they don't have or they wouldn't normally spend on based on the government mandate uh, to be able to, uh, to protect themselves. Secondly is a bill that uh, in times of emergency, um, uh, emergency declaration, uh, would, would restrict the hiring um, within the government just to those positions that are directly related uh, to be able to mitigate or to respond to the emergency. Now, the restriction is just during a time of emergency, uh, the declaration of an emergency. It does not restrict any otherwise. It just says that in, in this time, uh, all the resources should be directed towards uh, resolving or, or taking care of the emergency to include hiring and and so that's what these two bills are for mm -hmm. well senator i wanted to start with uh, bill 70 because as i recall uh you did write a letter to the governor regarding the possibility of pulling back that legislation if uh she were to use i think it was arpa money uh instead to recompense uh, families was there any movement on that, or are the reason well, why we're know, having a hearing on this is because there's been nothing? There, unfortunately, there hasn't there hasn't been any movement on that, and uh, I still stand with to, to my word that uh, if the governor um, ha does decide to be able to 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 use, especially uh, you know the the American Rescue Plan money or the remaining of the CARES Act money, um, to be able to uh, to provide this compensation, then I'll pull the bill back. Uh, it, it, it really won't, won't be necessary. And uh, I'll continue to work with, uh, as, uh, as I've said before, to told her, I will work with uh, her administration. I will work with her on uh, finding solutions, finding ways to be able to uh, help our community recover and get back up on its feet. And I, and I believe this is uh, one of those pieces of legislation that uh, uh, or one of those efforts, one of the one, one of the things that can be done to be able to help the, the community get back on its feet. Mm -hmm. And so then on, on Bill 91, um, on the restriction of the hiring of non-essential personnel, in your research uh, prior to this public hearing, do you have an idea, a rough estimate on how many uh, employees that fit into this category were hired during the current um, state of emergency that we're in? Well, I'm not going to speculate, you know, with regard to 
just how many employees you know were hired i think it's common knowledge Bree, that uh, there has been some hiring there has been talk uh, you know in the community there has been talk amongst you know even people in the government institute the necessity uh for some of this hiring with relation to the pandemic how does it fit and again this this legislation is just it's just during this practice is is just during um a state of declaration state of emergency in that i believe that the resources that we have in the government should be directed directly towards getting us out of this danger um and if you need to hire individuals to be able to accomplish that that's still permitted um it does not exceed past the, the declaration i think that uh, I, I, we can all agree that uh, uh once the emergency is done once we've gotten out of the declaration and then, you know we, we've basically gone back to normal then uh we can you know for lack of a better term justify or you know the, the need to be able to hire those individuals it doesn't it doesn't infringe upon that it just says that during the emergency the resources of the government of Guam should be solely and and primarily directed toward mitigating uh and and responding to that emergency mm-hmm. have you heard anything about a spending plan july 16th was uh the deadline uh for public comments for the u.s treasury's interim final guidance uh, the governor has kind of been holding to that July 16th uh, time frame uh, before we would, uh, I guess the public would know about this spending plan. Have you heard anything from the inside that you can tell us about? Well, you know, um, I, was, I was fortunate and honored, privileged to be able to be invited by uh, our Congressman Mike Snickless uh, to join in on a webinar provided by the Treasury Department on, those, uh, on the final ruling. Um, and uh, you know to talk about where things are at, and uh, with regard to how you can spend or how the the American Rescue Plan money um, should be utilized. And uh, there was a lot of information. We're still pouring through it uh, uh, with regard to you know you know what can be spent, how it can be spent. I, I think it's it's pretty exciting, at least from in my standpoint, in in the money that could be available that should be available to the community. Um, you know, to, to not just those individuals that were displaced, uh, but, you know, the individuals, too, that uh, put their lives on the line, you know, risk their lives uh, to be able to help to, to uh, mitigate, you know, the, the dangers. Um, and so uh, I think that, you know, later on today, I, I, I'm sending a letter to, to the governor um, with regard to, you know, how uh, suggestions as to you know how sh- the money can be can be best spent and also with the caveat that that i'm willing to work with her uh mm-hmm. and, and being able to make sure that uh this money as intended um goes to helping our community um you know get out of of, of this crisis uh that we we continue to be on my concern here dream and uh, you know chris and jay jason is uh in less than in, in less than 30 days or so um there is going to be, or in September actually, there's going to be this fiscal cliff, and I'm going to I'm going to characterize it that way, uh, that uh, we're going to have to confront, that we're going to have to either uh, jump and hopefully we land safely, or you know it could be uh, a little bit further down than than, than we all than we all think. It's a, it's scary because you know at that time many of uh, you know these the, the pool program, you know, is, is set to expire, um, and we still have uh, well over uh, 20,000 people who still rely on this to be able to make ends meet. What then? What 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 measures have we put in place, or what do we have now that would help to to continue to to help these individuals get back on their feet? Because in order for our community and our economy to survive this thing. Um, we've got to we've got to worry about that. Uh, you, know, you know, those individuals too that uh, continue to be displaced, and those businesses that continue to struggle, uh, that are continue to suffer. So, you know, what are uh, those plans? What 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 are we what are we doing to be able um, to, to to mitigate that? And uh, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm you know I'm continuing to work on, and that's uh, in line with the letter that I'll be sending to her today. 
Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted to follow up also on, is there any word on when you may be holding this uh, follow-up oversight hearing with the Guam Police Department? I'm not sure if you heard about this controversial decision that came out last week from the District Court of Guam uh, related to a uh, major drug case in that the cooperating defendant had provided all of this uh, additional information uh, to the uh, federal law enforcement authorities and for the most part the judge uh, kind of uh, admonished uh, federal investigators for not fully vetting the information um, you know as per the plea deal you know the cooperating defendant provides information in exchange for hopefully a lesser sentence but in in the nuts and bolts of that decision there was a part where um, the judge had said that these federal law enforcement agencies this is one of the points weren't sharing information, weren't vetting the information. And one of the reasons was, well, and only one of the reasons, was that, you know, if we share this information, for example, with local law enforcement officials, there has been cases where information has been leaked, therefore compromising investigations. And so have you, uh, are you planning on holding any further, a uh, follow-up, um, excuse me, oversight hearing? First off, Ray, uh, I'm fully aware of, of the of the, uh, the court case and, and what the judge, uh, you know, had commented on, um, and it's been, you know, unfortunately, a couple of decades ago, that continued to that, that that was the problem as well. You know, there's a trust issue in, in, in law enforcement, and I'll just say it bluntly. Uh, and then, you know, one of the things that needs to be worked on is obviously, you know, trusting each other. Uh, in, in furtherance of, of an investigation. And while granted, you know, the, the admonishment toward law enforcement was, was specifically directed towards federal agencies, um, you know, that was something that needed to be said because it continued to, it continues to happen. And, and you know, there, there has to be that trust issue. With regard to, you know, the, the fear that, uh, you know, when you, when, you, when you provide this information to local law enforcement, you fear the leak. Well, first off, uh, local law enforcement gets involved in these investigations as a joint, as a result of joint cooperation, and with the understanding, and for the most part, that uh, this information is is basically uh, you know, federal information, and you protect it. So, so to say that, well, uh, you know, we provide it to law enforcement, and there's a leak. Well, prove it. Mm -hmm. we, we've heard this a, a number of different times. I mean, in some cases. Uh, you know, I remember when I was in law enforcement, there, there was information that was supposed to be leaked, but we we took care of it. You know, we, we plugged that leak. And there's going to be a GPD and customs, Guam Customs. Um, you know, we're not the only agencies that are in town, or nor are the only agencies that can be accused of this. Just as much as that is, you know, federal law enforcement, too, uh, may have some issues with regards to, 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 uh, to holding information sacred you know, during, during an investigation. So, but going back to, to the, the oversight hearing, yes, you know, we, I still com communicate uh, weekly with, with the chief of police to talk about, you know, the, the, the progress of some of the concerns that were initially brought up and some of the concerns that continue to be brought up. We're recognizing that uh, many of these things um, have investigations that are being conducted and, and, and wanting to make sure that, okay, if you're conducting the investigation, and in a lot of cases, these are joint investigations with the AG's office, uh, you know, let's let that course happen. Let's let's you know let's, let's, let's make sure that that's taken care of. We don't want to be the impetus, and we don't want to be the reason why you know a case was broken down uh, because uh, the information was shared in an oversight. Get it, get it done, get it completed. You know, weed out the bad guys. Uh, let's come back to you. Is there any of your issues, concerns that you that you have that you that you're going to need our help in? Um, let's be able to talk about this. But in the meantime, you know, unfortunately, the the, the, the you know there the, these cases um, do take some time, and there are basically legal time limits, and we don't want to be uh, the, the the reason as to why many of these things were broken. Mm -hmm. All right, Senator, I know you've got your oversight, I mean, your public hearing uh, in just a few minutes, but, you know, we are preparing to commemorate the 77th uh, liberation of Guam, and you are the president of the Guam War Survivors Memorial Foundation, so I just wanted to uh, give you this opportunity to give a, a message to our, our community. Thank you very much. You know, to first off, to, to our survivors, 
um, you know, to many of the to the ones that, that are still here, thank you for your endurance. Um, you know, you know, great. Seventy-seven years ago, you know, there were there there were prayers that were that were told, said by thousands of Chamorros. Um, and seventy-seven years ago, you know, those prayers were answered, um, and uh, basically the uh, you know the landing of, of, of the military forces to be able to free our people from from bondage uh, by by the enemy forces. And so, in commemoration of this, we I want to say to 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 our survivors, thank you for for your efforts. I thank you for your for having to endure this. Uh, we're going to continue to remember this. We 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 know that today we are going to celebrate 77 years of your prayers being answered. Um, to our community, please take the time uh, to be able to to thank them as well, to hug them, um, because what they had to go through we hope that we never have to go through ever again so thank you very much and viva liberation viva liberation thank you right. Sen viva. <laughs> thanks senator good luck today all right thank you bye-bye okay take care okay that was uh, senator frank bloss uh jr uh, bill, his bills are going up for a public hearing uh today and with more news now we go to tyler messinani this news up